Welcome, welcome. Thank you for watching the replay. So, <clears throat> Instagram is telling everyone that I'm going live. I was just in our Remembering Lemuria integration ceremony, and so I was like all dressed up, and I was like, I should come talk to you. Um, so, hello, hello. Welcome, Francoise. Hello, welcome, welcome. Hi, small kind. Hi, Jose. Hello, Whole Truth. Hello, Rachel. Welcome. Woohoo! Yay! I'm happy you're here too. Hello, welcome, welcome. Hello, Fractal Expressions. Welcome, everyone. So, a question that I often get whenever we're doing enrollments for Shamanic Star Sound, which is the sound healing course that is now open and available to you. Uh, the link is in my bio. Um, so one of the questions that I often get is what sound healing instruments should I start with or what sound healing instruments do I need to um, participate in the course? Because we have level one of the of Shamanic Star Sound where you actually don't have to have any instruments. You can totally take the course without any instruments. You can just learn from sound, learn about sound, learn how to use different instruments. And hi Desiree. Um, and then make an informed decision about what sound healing instruments you want to get after that. So that's definitely one thing you can do. You can be a complete sound healing novice to, to start. Um, so, so then to the question of like, you know, which, what sound, which sound healing instruments should I start with? What sound healing instruments should I get first? So first of all, I've actually made a video about this um, two years ago, but I thought I would refresh it. So um, if, I'm, if you watch that video and I'm repeating myself, then maybe I'll say something that I didn't say the last time. So, um, so first of all, the very last thing that I want you to do if you're considering purchasing sound healing instruments is to um, get the sound healing instruments that I have or um, you know just get something just to have something to start with but not really feel connected with it um, and then you know it's kind of like you know when you go on Amazon and you're so excited to learn about a new to new topic and so you go and you research and you buy all the books and all the audiobooks and everything and then you they all come and then like you know maybe you read one or two and then it kind of like falls to the wayside so that is not what we want to have happen here because sound healing is it can be just kind of a, a hobby that you do on the side but it can also be deeply nourishing and healing and and very personal you know i feel like that's the beauty of sound healing is that as you offer sound medicine to others that you are also receiving healing yourself so um so definitely i would say to to really feel into what is your intention with practicing sound healing hi amanda um so what is your intention with practicing sound healing? Is it that you want to just do that for yourself? Um, perhaps you are wanting to share it with your family. Um, children love sound healing. Um, and perhaps you, or perhaps you have a healing profession already, whether you're a yoga teacher or massage therapist or a regular therapist or a counselor or um, you are an acupuncturist, any of those you could add sound healing to. I've done many of those. Um, so it's a really lovely addition to a pre-existing healing, um, pre-existing condition, <laughs> pre-existing healing practice um, to add sound healing in. You could even actually just have, uh, I've done it where it was like, um, it's just a sound healing session where you're not, maybe you're doing Reiki or something else like that too, or crystals or something like that. But you can also have people just come in and lay on the massage table or on the floor and just play sound for them. That's like fully and completely, and there are lots of courses that are more specific about that. Um, 
or you might want to be doing you know broadcast on the internet for sound healing you might want to be um, doing events when that is possible to have gatherings to do sound healing as a ceremony or as part of a festival or anything like that yes like kylie incorporates them into her intuitive reading so it's wonderful or even you could use it for yourself to get yourself set up to do your intuitive readings it can go both ways so so tuning into what you would like to how you would like to use sound what your intention is because if you're doing more um more things for yourself or for uh like a one-on-one -on -one practice you might have smaller instruments you might also have a full set of crystal singing bowls all of that but um when i first started when i was an acupuncturist i had tuning forks um, which i still have these beautiful tuning forks and so i would play them uh next to my client's ears i would often choose these are a chakra set so I would choose two chakras that needed to be balanced and I would play them for the client. But then I would also, there is a whole separate practice of called acutonics where you're actually placing the uh, tuning forks on specific acupuncture points and they have weights on them so they vibrate more. This, these kind are really for sound. When you have the weights on the top, those are more for actually placing them on the body on the actual acupuncture points. So. But just to say that you might have more like smaller things, you know, not like huge instruments. I mean, like maybe you want to be beating a drum over your client if they're, you know, in your healing practice, but that might be, might be too much in the beginning. Um, so you can also use little things like bells. I had a lot of little bells that I used in the beginning in my healing practice. Um, and just to, cause really it's like there's, there's, I'll get into it a little bit more later, but there's kind of two kinds of, in one way, there's kind of two, two kind of sound healing instruments. There are one thing that is dispersing energy. And a lot of times that is like percussive sounds. And then there are also sounds that are more smoothing and droning that can be more um, harmonizing the energy. So you have things that clear the energy or break the energy to disperse it. And then you have things that like smooth the energy like crystal singing bowls or tuning forks or yeah, like a hand pan can actually do both or a tong drum or something like that. So you might want to have smaller things like I had little Tibetan, I still have in my, in my office, my first little teeny tiny little Tibetan bowl. It's not even that you can like play it like this. It was just to ding really. Um, so you could have larger Tibetan bowls but something that you can hold, you can also have, uh, this is actually a rattle that I made. So, um, so you can have all of, or you can have larger things, right? Like you have crystal singing bowls. This is a drum. There's a pyramid over there, crystal pyramid. So there's lots of different things. So it just depends on what you want. I would say if you're just starting out, <clears throat> you probably want to have uh, so of the dispersing kind where that is a rattle or a drum or like even a feather I actually had a vision in a sound healing where I saw myself using a feather and then I went to uh, my my boyfriend's house and he had this feather and I was like can I have that <laughs> so I would use this To disperse the energy as well so sound healing instruments a lot of people are like oh no I don't have the money to be able to buy sound healing instruments and it's like there are a lot of things that you can use whether it's a feather like and it doesn't have to be a big feather like this the other feather that I have is up there that I used in my practice for a long time and it's um, just about this long so it can just be a simple feather, it can be bells, could be tuning forks. And like I said, this is a rattle that I made that was, it's actually some crystal beads that are inside. I went around my house and like literally was trying to like put the beads in everything and shaking them all. And I just covered it, it was this uh, vase that I got from Egypt. And then I just covered it with a piece of cloth and that's it. And this is, this is this rattle. So it's very easy to, it's very sound healing instruments don't have to be this big thing that you have to 
procure and make this like big investment in. So you can have sound healing instruments and your voice is an incredible sound healing instrument as well. We have a new section. Our sister Oni is going to be teaching us how to um, use our voices as sound healing instruments. And now our, in the new version, um, the newest wave, we have our sister Simran, who's also going to be teaching us how to do light language transmission. So both of these are using your voice as sound healing instrument as well. So sound healing instruments doesn't mean that you have to have all the paraphernalia that I have with like two sets of crystal singing bowls and all kinds of stuff. You can have many other things that, that are much easier. Um, and so I would say, so if you're just starting out and you, I would say it's good to have one instrument, one or two instruments that you can use to disperse the energy, right? So shaking something like this, you can just feel. was good just like by itself <laughs> so yeah so you can just these were just beads that I had that were crystal beads that I put into here and I put them in all different kinds of things um, to see how they would shake best so having something that's dispersing and then having something that's more uh, smoothing or droning so that could be a crystal singing bowl something like this and you can you can start small kind you know it doesn't have to be anything super fancy like a bowl like this and you can choose which chakra people are always like what what bowl should I start with so it really is also tuning in to your relationship with that that instrument this is actually not the mallet I need to use this um, your relationship to the instrument because I believe that sound healing instruments are sentient beings I mean especially something like crystal singing bowls you know they're made of silica sand that's the same thing as quartz so I believe that sound healing instruments in the moment that they are created they're already tuning into your energy they already have your energy in mind when they are going through their creation process even if there are other they have other owners ahead of you they always feel you and they're always thinking of you and they're always on their way to you so the other thing too is that a lot of people are also like, um, you know, I feel like, uh, like I'm like worried that I don't have the money to be able to buy the sound healing instruments, all the sound healing instruments that I need. And the thing of it is that, I, and I've seen it in my own life and in so the lives of so many students where it is that, uh, you like when you say yes to sharing sound medicine and you say it like fully that that vibration and that commitment is heard by the universe by the sound healing instruments who are already wanting to work with you and when they hear that you are willing to step into that place i'm like people people just lent me like the you know i have two sets of crystal singing bowls and this is actually one of them that was one of the first ones that was lent to me like i had friends who were like do you want to borrow and it was a lot of instruments they were like do you want to borrow our full set of crystal singing bowls i couldn't even fit that big one in the car it was like i only borrowed six because i could only fit that many in the car and then he was like do you want to borrow the ocean drum what about a didgeridoo and i was like please stop <laughs> it was like this is so overwhelming um and so, so it really is like, and I've had people who are like, I found a crystal singing bowl in the thrift store. Like what? 
you know? So it's like people can give them to you. You could find them on eBay. You could find them in the thrift store. You could make them. Um, there are, people could lend them to you. And then you could also manifest the money to buy them. Um, so when you say yes, like truly, it's like this crystal singing bowl. I first met Ama Sophia, who has this one, who makes these in Kauai. And I saw this bowl and I was like, I want that one. And so then I came home and I had a candle holder that was uh, one of these candle holders that's shaped like a bowl that I actually got because it looked like a crystal singing bowl. It's a gold one. Um, and then I had a candlestick, a separate candlestick that had like it was to set one of these um, <clears throat> bigger candles. Uh, that are that are like this you would sit this kind of candle on that kind of candlestick holder so I took these two candle holders one that was shaped like a crystal singing bowl and one that was shaped like the bottom of this bowl I put them together on my altar and I was like I'm manifesting that singing bowl and then she reached out to me and she I was doing the Instagram class at that time and she reached out to me and she was like hey I'm really interested in your Instagram class and I was like well that's wonderful because I'm really interested in that crystal singing bowl that you have and so we ended up doing a partial trade for that so there's so many ways that sound healing instruments can come into your life besides for you purchasing them um, I always say that to me sound is one of my spirit guides and our spirit guides are very powerful don't operate in normal linear time and um, with normal linear circumstances and sometimes they actually have to they really put us into kind of an uncomfortable situation so that we will trust them have you ever had that happen <laughs> where your your guides have been like mm -hmm, you're gonna jump but you're gonna have to trust us first so right yeah Kylie totally um, so so it really is like beginning your journey as a sound healer is really entering into a relationship with sound as a spirit guide so right yes exactly i mean this is the same so france francoise is like she has she saw her first sound healing on instagram and then now she's like i heard the call i'm all in i'm doing all the things i'm getting my instruments coming in and it just aligns it just aligns aloha marty marty is one of our guest teachers in shamanic star sounds so thank you for being with us she's over in oahu aloha um, so as far as, um, as far as, so, okay, we, we talk about many things. <laughs> okay. So as far as which sound healing instruments to start with, we said you want to have something that's dispersing. Yeah. You always feel that way with the wind, right? So you want to have something that is, that can disperse the energy and then even like a bell. You can feel how that's dispersing the energy. And then you might want to have, and see, these things are really funny because they're both really similar. Where this is more soothing, more smoothing. Right? So you could have something that is dispersing and something that's smoothing that might even kind of operate the same way. So one of my favorite things too is a rain stick. So this is a fan, this is a fancy rain stick because my dad got this for me. Um, so this is not, this is the, the futuristic version of the, the traditional rain stick. Um, so, uh, and I think that you can find this, you have to like search for it. Many of our students have found this, um, but I'm not remembering where it is right now. But, so with a rain stick, if it's traditional kind or this kind, you can use it as, as smoothing. That's smoothing, 
smoothing the energy is when it's like rain. And then you can also use it as dispersing. So, so that's one of my favorite things too, is to use a rain stick for both. So it'd be a smoothing and dispersing. Um, that's also to say that you can, you know, if you wanted to have one of these uh, Sonic Bowl Alchemy, these are, I'm a Sophia who makes these bowls. She just did a really great Instagram live video explaining these bowls and why they are the way that they are. And there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of intention that they put into these bowls. Um, so you can do it where it's like smoothing and you can also do it where you can use this instrument to disperse too. multiple different tones in these bowls. So I would say that you would want to start with, if you're going to do the sound lab and you want to join us in the sound lab, I know, isn't it cool? <laughs> if you want to join us, so we have in Shamanic Star Sound, which we're doing enrollment for now, we have two levels. There's level one, where you don't have to have any instruments at all. You can just take it just to learn about sound, to learn all the different instruments, and then to decide which ones you wanna get after that or during the course. You'll also be really surprised like if you already have sound healing instruments and you take the course that they just start finding you more <laughs> or you feel inspired to get more. Um, so level one, you can be a complete beginner. Um, level two, we have limited spots in the sound lab. This is level two for the sound lab, all, shamanic star sound, all inclusive. And so for that, if you were just starting out and you still wanted to join us in the lab, you don't have to have uh, many experiences with uh, sound to join us in the lab. You can still just be starting out. Um, the laboratory is a place for us to experiment and play together and learn from each other and learn from sound. Because the most, some of the most the coolest things that I've learned about sound healing have actually just been from hanging out and jamming with other sound healers. Um, we also have the chance to like apply and practice the things that we've been learning in the course. So for that, if you wanna do the sound lab, I would say you would wanna have one or two instruments that can disperse. So again, this can be something that you make, a rattle that you make. Um, it could also be something like the the drum or like I have a traditional drum here Right there. This is a traditional drum and then we also have the ocean drum there So the ocean drum is another drum that you can use in many different ways So it can be also clearing and dispersing and it can also be it is still and it's smoothing It's also kind of dispersing because it's kind of an intense energy so to have something that is dispersing the energy and then to have something that can smooth the energy. Um, so then that way um, you have the opportunity and the capacity to, to move the energy in different ways. So you have the, the capacity to be able to disperse the energy and then you have the capacity to be able to smooth and harmonize the energy. Um, so yeah, if you guys have questions, I see a lot of people that I love inside here in the room. Thank you so much for being here. Um, so Nicole asks, do you have a, do you have a, do you have a harmonium? I don't personally have a harmonium. Um, so I, and I haven't ever played a harmonium. I've been in the presence of many amazing harmoniums, but I don't have a harmonium myself. But I would say that a harmonium is definitely one of those instruments that you can use to smooth. You know, anything that has like a droning sound, you can take basically the concepts that I teach around crystal singing bowls. You could use that with a harmonium. Marnie has a harmonium. So yeah, you could, you could ask Marnie. 
uh, if she has recommendations for, or Marnie, if you have things that you want to type in, you want to share with us about how, do, how you use your harmonium. Um, so yeah, and then also one thing to consider when you are, uh, when you are beginning to welcome in new members of your sound healing family, that's what I like to say. Uh, again, you don't, I wouldn't get too many all at once because it's, you're developing a relationship with them. So you don't want to have, you know, just like, I don't know, maybe it's like you, you have relationships that you're working on building as you go and it's not like, wow, I have all of these instruments all at once and then I just get overwhelmed and I don't ever play them anymore. Um, so if that is you already, you are invited to join us for Shamanic Star Sound to rebuild that relationship with you. Uh, Marnie says for a harmonium, it's always great for low bass tones, ohm, and deep resonance. Yes, definitely. And, and of course, singing with it as well. Um, and a shruti box functions kind of similarly to, to a harmonium. So... Um, so yeah, so then you can also feel into, as you build your collection, as you, and not build your collection, as you welcome members of your sound healing family into your sphere, um, to, to consider kind of like some people, for, like for me, I, I tend to go more with the kind of crystalline energies. Um, and I prefer sounds that are, um, can be more kind of like spacey or kind of strange, weird sounding or like angelic or extraterrestrial. And uh, then, um, and then other people might like when I was working with my sound healing partner, when I was first starting out, he was really kind of more, you know, worked with the gong and with the Tibetan singing bowls and was really more like anchoring in these kind of like earthy metal energies. And it's not to say that you have to choose either because like Marnie has a gong and she has singing bowls and she has Tibetan bowls and it's all wonderful and glorious. Uh, so, so yeah, it really is, it really is interesting. Um, okay, so Nicole is asking about the harmonium but she's wondering where you got yours, Marnie. Um, so yeah, if that conversation doesn't end up completing, you guys can connect. Um, and then also, yes, the singing. Yeah, definitely. So we have two sections that are vocal sections now in Shamanic Star Sound. Oni is teaching a section on voice and it's how to use your voice as an instrument by itself and also how to use your voice as an instrument with other sound healing instruments. So one of the things that she does is that she sings with her crystal singing bowls as well, and her Tibetan bowls. And, um, and then we also have Simran, who is sharing about how to channel light language, how to know and feel through what is your unique connection to a, your unique frequency of light language, how to be the clear channel to bring that through, and how to incorporate that. Because Simran also does, she channels light language with um, with her singing bowls. So, okay, wonderful. I have a harmonium and I'm playing with the resonance mixed with the crystal quartz and Tibetan bowls and it's so magical. Beautiful. Amazing. Yeah, so I feel like we covered everything. So just to recap, so really tuning into what is your intention with your sound healing instruments. Are you going to be using them for yourself or your family or your friends? Or are you going to um, use them more for individual one-on-one -on -one sessions to incorporate into your healing practice? Or are you going to have a sound healing practice one-on-one -on -one sessions? Or are you wanting to do larger broadcast and group ceremonies? And then to uh, tune into um, if you have instruments that are more dispersing you want to have those and so that you can clear the energy so that you can kind of cut the energy to, to break it, to move it, any kind of things that are stuck energy. You want to be able to move that with something that can disperse the energy. And then you want to have something that is more smoothing. And also too, I do have a link in my um, bio for the free resources section 
And in our, we have a huge free resources page with lots of things, besides sound healing instruments, lots of things. So if you uh, go to the link in my bio and you go to the free resources section, you will scroll down and you will see a picture of crystal singing bowls. And that will actually take you to Simran's online store where you would be able to get a singing bowl like this. So this is a um, an eight inch, and this one is, I feel like this is a heart. I would have to double check. Um, but you could get a singing bowl like this for less than $100. Sometimes it can even be much less than that. So that, so you could get a few like this. And so, yeah, but just feel into like, what is your intention with, with sound healing instruments and um, and really connecting, really taking that time to ask, to open up, to receive their invitation for you to work with them. Because there might be sound healing instruments that are calling to you that you might not have thought of before. But then you're like, ooh, there's something about that. I never considered that, but there's something about that I really feel connected to. Ah. Uh, Regarding the course, can I take it even when I haven't taken a single music class before? Yes, yes. You know what? I haven't ever taken a music class. <laughs> I have some online courses that I've done some parts of, but really it's like so much of my learning has been experiential and learning. I've learned a lot of things that are music theory and I've studied a lot. Um, but I haven't done any like formal music training or vocal training or voice training. So I'm going to be in class with you when Oni is our guest teacher. And when Simran's our guest teacher, I'm going to be learning alongside you. Um, so yes, you can absolutely take the course. Even when you haven't had a single music class, you don't have any instruments. You can also be um, a well-versed uh, sound healer. Like for example, Simran was actually a student in shamanic star sound and she already had a sound healing certification maybe even a couple of them but she didn't feel like comfortable to actually be able to hold ceremonial space and to be able to really share her gifts even though she had this like real technical training so um and now after taking shamanic star sound she's like i really feel so much more connected to my um my intuitive guidance and to my relationship with the instruments. And she says that she actually trusts her relationship with the instruments and sound as a, as a spirit guide to be able to guide her. And that's, that's really, that, that's really what it really comes down to. You taught yourself piano at nine and then the guitar at 10. So you have a good ear, but no notion of skills. Yeah, see, and, and I actually take that back. I did play the flute in middle school, but I don't remember any of that. <laughs> okay, so there was another question up here. Hi, Laura. Laura Nee. Okay. What are my favorite instruments that are some of the more um, extraterrestrial or like heady sounding ones? So one of my favorite things to work with in sound healing ceremony is silence and so and it so it really is it's not necessarily so much that it's like the instrument because the instrument might not sound like weird or spacey or heady or extraterrestrial if i play it now but when we're in a ceremonial space and it's like you know you've gone through the ocean drum which has been totally like clearing out all of your meridians and your chakras and it's like there's you've gone through this experience and then there's this silence and then in that silence you hear something like I don't know how it's coming through on the phone but that can sound really weird. People are like, were there birds? <laughs> like the winged ones. Um, <clears throat> another one that sounds 
can sound really strange, really extraterrestrial, kind of heady, is the Crystal Pyramid. And when I'm in ceremony, I'm like full on, like it's a good thing people's eyes are closed because I'm full on swinging that. <laughs> and it makes, it really bends, bends the time space continuum. So yes, I know, isn't it great? So yeah. So if you're feeling called to step in and to, isn't it strong? Right? I feel like we should. <laughs> and, and then like, you know, each of these are so different too. So this, to me, this sounds like a lightsaber. If you are feeling called to step more fully and more deeply onto the path as a carrier of sound medicine, as a keeper of frequency, and if you're curious about the term keeper of frequency, you can check out the interview that I did with Simran on her podcast, Sonic Alchemy, and I think that's what it's called. I made a post about it in my Instagram feed, so you can check it out there. We talked about each of our journeys of becoming keepers of frequency. And uh, so if you're feeling called to step onto the path of being a keeper of frequency, being a carrier of sound medicine, to share and offer this medicine for yourself and for our collective, for your community, both local and global at this time, then yeah, please join us for Shamanic Star Sound. The link is in my bio. There are, I think, six or seven seats left in the Sound Lab. There are 12 spots available, and so almost half of those have been filled already. So if you have sound healing instruments, you're welcome to join us then. Um, and how many hours a week do I think it takes to, between the module and the practice? So how much time should you expect to commit? So again, this is kind of like choose your own adventure. Um, you know, if, you, if you're really, you know, someone might want to just do sound healing all the time, you know, like eat, sleep, do a little work and sound healing. Um, so that would be, that would be their adventure that they could choose to go on. The modules, so each of the uh, modules has between about one to five videos that range from 30 minutes. I think the longest one is an hour and a half. So we don't want to give you too much information in one section. So we try to space it out, but I would say it's good to, it's good to practice, to allow, I would say between like two to three hours per week. And that's, that's totally stretched out over many days. Um, and some of the, and you have access to the con all the content for life, right? So everybody who um, signed up with us uh, back in 2018, they still, and you can walk again every time we run the course, you can walk again with the current class, which means you get all the emails and you get to kind of like walk along the path with the current class. And you also get access to any and all updates or additions so everybody who signed up back in 2018 gets access to uh, Oni's new content, Simran's new content, Marnie's new content, new content that I make and add to it, any other teachers that we bring in. We also have a PDF that we're putting together to share with you about how to um, set up the Zoom setting so that you can do sound healing over Zoom because that was not possible for a long time which is why we didn't do the sound lab for several times. 
Um, but now we can. Zoom is caught up. The technology is caught up to the vision that I was given. Um, and um, so you would get access to any and all new additions. So for if you signed up with wave one, so I've been guided to do two overlapping sections of this course right now uh, because of the, the portal that we're walking through, the initiation of Saturn and Jupiter going into uh, into into Aquarius we're going into the age of Aquarius and so I just was really guided to have two overlapping sound healing sections so we're actually I'm actually going to be sitting with brand new sound healers or sound healers that are stepping deeper onto the path every week sometimes twice per week from the end of this month through the beginning of January so it is a huge wave of sound healing that is being called forth. And so if you joined us for wave one and you got the access to Oni's new work and Marnie's meditation that she adds, you will also get access to Simran's new content around light language when that is released in the beginning of December. So we'll send you an email and you'll get access to that. So it really is such a gift to give yourself to be able to step deeper and deeper onto the path of sound healing, to be a keeper of frequency. And so if you're feeling called, tap the link in my bio and join us and it would be such a, a deep honor to walk this path with you. All right, guys, thank you so much for coming and I love seeing all of your names. Thank you for all of your questions and all of your shares. I hope that this was helpful. If you have any more questions, Drop them in the comments below. I'm gonna add this to my page and yes. Merci, Francoise, and mahalo. All right, my loves, have an amazing night or day wherever you are. Lots of love.